Hello and welcome to another video tutorial with me. Now today I'm going to show you something that I've been asked by a couple of people and um, actually I've learned this from our very own Rich. Um, that is where I've seen this before and I've asked him and he was really nice to explain to me how to do this. So now I'm sharing the wisdom. <laughs> Thank you Rich for that. And this is how to do the shapes of the crew in this image here. I mean, I'm pretty sure that I'm, that you know how to include font here, so I don't have to show you that. But let me show you how to make these crew members here. First, um, I want to explain that these heights here are accurate. They are all the size that they should be, like for example, Dancia here is 1 meter 60, Jelana is 1 meter 65, and Damien Winter is somewhere around 190, I think. Um, and that is something that is important to me because I like those details and I found this nice size chart here that goes from 0 down here at the bottom to 2 meter 10 at the top here and I'm going to use that for our image so I'm going to duplicate this into my empty untitled one file and I'm going to make this a bit bigger by holding down control and pressing T for free transform. Going down to the edge um, corner thing here, hold down shift to keep the proportions and make it big enough to fit in here. There we go. Since we don't see this in the end, it doesn't matter if it is a bit blurry, we just need this to adjust the sizes, right? So first thing is um, that I used custom shapes in Photoshop and that is why I can't explain it in programs like GIMP or PaintNet or something because I don't have the custom shapes in there. I mean they don't have this tool. You can use brushes that um, have those silhouettes here and there are a few for GIMP um, but some of the tools that I'm going to use and te techniques are not possible in GIMP or PaintNet. Um, I have downloaded GIMP, but I have to admit the last time I used it is like 10 years ago or something, so I don't remember anything and I have to fiddle myself through it before I can show anything in it. So for now, I'm going to show this to you only in Photoshop. and if I ever find my way through GIMP again, I'm going to show you how to do this in GIMP. Unless someone else of you is using GIMP, has an idea and wants to show it to everybody, so feel free to do that. <laughs> now um, I'm going to use this technique, um, and these tools that I have in Photoshop here. I think it's CS6, I'm not quite sure. Um, let me actually take a look if I can see it somewhere, I think here. Okay, maybe not. I think it's CS6. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, okay, let's start with the new file that has our size chart here. So the first thing we do is we use a custom shape. Um, the ones I got are those that Rich has shown to me on this nice website here. There are nine pages of lots of silhouettes of people and stickmen and Victorian and dancing and everything that you can imagine basically. Um, so just go through these and download the ones that you think would be useful for you for these images. I actually have downloaded everything because I'm a hoarder. So um, don't do that maybe if, unless you want to. So. I'm going to post this link in the comment section of this video so you can take a look yourself. I have already loaded some in here, but let's just pretend that I'm a starter, so I don't... Oops! <laughs> I shouldn't have appended that. Reset shapes. Okay. No, I don't want to change though. So this is actually what you usually have in your shape window, in the custom shape one. If you don't see this little splat here, click on it and hold down the mouse 
you might see like for example this rectangle tool or the polygon tool or ellipse tool or anything you go down here to custom shape tool and this way you get this nice menu up here and can use the shapes so this is what you usually start with to load in your brushes, uh, not brushes, sorry, the shapes that you have downloaded. First you have to unpack them because they are zip files and then um, you don't have to put them into a specific folder. Just put them where you find them. Then go to load brushes here and go to the folder that you made with your files. I have like all the vector people here. I said I have downloaded them all. <laughs> Nobody cares really. Um, and if we just take something female silhouettes, and look, let's look how these look. Well, these are nice, but they are not really made for uniforms because they are Victorian dresses and everything. So I'm going to load another one. For example, business women. That sounds more like what we need. Yes, that works. So. We take a woman, uh, a woman shape here. Let me see. They're a little small, so it's hard to see. Sometimes you just want to check, take one, and see if it works. And if you don't want someone with high heels or you don't want a skirt, just go to Control Z or Z, depending on where you live, and um, make it vanish again. <laughs> so let me take this one. This looks actually nice. And I'm holding down the shift key to keep the proportions because we really want to keep the proportions. Otherwise it's either so wide or small or looks like a dwarf or anything. So let's hold down this and drag her to the size that you want her to be. You can do that later too with a resizing. Um, doesn't really matter what sh which you do first. So I want her to be 160, uh, 170 is okay. So I let use of this and you can see that now I have the path here. Um, you could have done a shape. Let me make a new layer here for this one and another for the shape. And that would do the same here, but it, it actually goes on and fills her right away with a foreground color. And that is why I don't do that, because sometimes I want to fix the the path and I personally am one of these people who can fix the path better when it's not filled with color already. If you can do that, no problem at all. Now it's white here, you maybe wonder why. Because you have to go up here and fill with black and there we go. That worked. So this is when you use the shape. And here's our old work path. Just go back to the layer here and into the path window that is right to next to the layers and click on the work path and you see the path here and then you can go to the foreground color with black and click down here the first button that is fill path with foreground color and there you go same thing <laughs> now you can go in and instead of fixing it with the uh, fixing this path where you can see the, all these um, accessories like buttons and bracelets and everything. Um, you can fix them either by adding a vector mask, a layer mask here. Choose a black brush and then paint over this, which makes it go away because of this mask here. When you paint with white, it comes back. So if you paint mm, now this and make this a bit smoother because uniforms are not that crumbly usually. And put on this and this. Make it all pretty. Uh, she has heels now but usually um, I keep those and just make them a bit thicker. So I'm now clicking on the on the layer here with the shape, not the mask, because I want to paint something in here. So I'm going in with black and make this heel a bit bigger. So 
it doesn't look like she's going to work on the street or go into a club or anything nothing wrong with that but if you wear uniform you possibly want to have something more practical so you can run if you have to like when the war come or ambulance or whoever so a th thicker heel is better in this case you can of course let me show this as a shape here because we have the path work on the path itself with a pen tool I usually go and use the add anchor point tool if I want to fix something or move something around then I make a box selection to see all these little boxes here in this case I want to make the box here to select all these at the same time then I'm moving with my cursor arrows and I'm making another box selection at the side here to select all of these to make a thicker heel and every now and then I see that there are way too many of these little boxes so I'm going in with the reduction pen just hold down here and go to delete anchor point tool and then I'm going in and delete some of these and then when this happens I go in again with the add anchor point tool and instead of adding an uh, anchor on the path here I'm grabbing the handles and work with them there we go or click on an existing box and move it around if I need or want to so that's a broader one now as well so that works um, this is the same way if you do not use let me make a new layer here move the layers a bit side this a bit here to move stuff on this axis I'll make sure that they stay at the same height I just use the cursor arrows now we have used this shape thing here usually what I do when I use custom shapes is I'm going to the shape menu use path and let me get her in well, a bit smaller because there's no room <laughs> and then I have only the path here and then I can work on this with the same tools as I have worked before and then I go to path and click on fill that is what I usually do so it works just however you like what is easier for you and so on. So now that we have this let me take one of the ladies, put that bit here let me show you how to do the uniform so we don't need her so I'm going in making your layer and then I make a clipping mask that means that the layer I'm going to paint on affects only the layer it is clipped to so either I'm pressing alt and go in between these two layers until the cursor changes and then I click or I right click the new layer and go to create clipping mask and it clips right to the layer beneath easy as that then what we want to do is we want to have grey shoulders and we want to have a collar in her department color so first I'm going to do the shoulder part which is grey a bit lighter there and I do use this polygonal lasso tool because it makes straight lines so I'm going to about here the straight line above is you can make it however you like you can make it really straight sometimes the position of the shape um, calls for something a bit less straight so just judge it by the shape that you are playing with so I'm doing this and then I go in either with the brush and fill this or I just use the bucket and fill it depends on how lazy I am or what I think about so now we know that um, part of this here is face part of this is hair and we don't want to have the collar or the shoulder part in the hair 
Let us define where the neckline is. So let me take a brush on a new layer just to paint it in for a little bit of guideline. We have the shoulder here and this would be like here. We have the shoulder here and this would be like here. So this is a new layer that we didn't really paint it into the picture. We don't need this really if you are good with eyeballing it. So this is just to help me. <laughs> so we go back to the shoulder part, use another vector layer mask, take a black brush, I make it a bit bigger and I'm going to delete the parts that I think should not be grey and go back on the shoulder parts here, back to the grey brush, make it a bit smaller and then I'm painting in where I think the neck would be. So now this looks okay. I have to fix a bit there and there where there's no hair. Make it a bit nicer and round and natural. Sometimes I just go in and take this rectangle and my key tool here and then fill that with grey. And then I go back onto the mask here with a nice round brush and make sure that it really looks nice like this. And then if you are happy, um, right now I'm a bit unhappy there, that is better it needs to raise a little in that direction there much better and the rest around here is hair or maybe she has a thinner neck then you just go in and raise a little bit more until you're happy with it then we go to the layer where the lady is on and press the U layer this way it's automatically clipped and we need to have it under the shoulder part so we can paint over the lines and now I take a marquee tool here, the rectangular one. Choose a nice department color, for example, teal, because I like teal. And fill this. And if it is not high enough, we can move it a bit around here. And there she has a nice color. And if you're really, really, really big fan of these uniforms you can also do something that I have seen in Reno's um, uniforms on the Darwin because he went in and made those nice little V's in the collar just going in here masking that out And if I have to fix it, I'm taking a little bit of a bigger brush. Make it a bit more pointy at the bottom. There we go. Um, another thing that I have seen also at Reno, so thank you for all the inspiration, <laughs> um, is that he didn't make the um, bottom of the shoulder part straight like I do but he went in and made them a bit more curvy which looked really really nice so let me show you how to do that you go back to the shoulder part and you can either go do it by hand or you can do it with many other tools so let me show you two of them one of them is by hand um, I go to back to the brush tool and since I used the blue now the grey is gone so I hold down alt to have the color picker and click on that and now I have gray again. You can also go um, here at the side to the color picker, click the gray and then go back to the brush, however you like. I'm taking a bit around the brush. Make sure the sampling is at zero so it's nice and smooth. Then I start here and by holding down shift and clicking at the point where I want to go, I'm having a nice roundish color. Another way 
is to use the pen tool. If you are very familiar with it, you will know what I'm going to do. If you are not, I'm going to suggest that you are going to learn the pen tool. Um, watch some tutorials on YouTube, there are really great ones out there. The pen, uh, pen tool is a really, really powerful tool and it's fantastic for some stuff, for nice curves and everything. And this is how we do it. We go to the pen tool. We don't use the add anchor pen tool or delete anchor point tool or anything. We go to pen tool here. We begin on one side, point one in the middle and drag the mouse a little. So we have these nice handles out here. Go to the other side and you see this nice lovely curve here. And then we just go here to the other side to close down this thing go to path and fill and there we go if you are having this path here and you are not happy with this first let me unfill this you use the add anchor point tool and mark this here and then you can just drag it around you can play with the handles until you are happy with the shape that you have. I'm going here and pull this down a little bit to match the edge. And when you are happy, then you go to fill and there you have it. And that is how I do these nice little figures. I just make sure that the um, figures are at the correct heights here. That is why I have this size shot in it. And after I've done all the crew put them all next to each other, I add the writing here, um, I add the names of the character down here, these are the department colors, this is the motto of the ship and that's basically it. So um, I hope that this helped you and if you have any questions, comments, problems with this um, that I can help you with, just let me know in the comments and I will happily help you with it. And that's it and until next time. Bye bye.